Hello and welcome to Waterfall Joe. In today's video we're going to be going over HDR photography, high dynamic range photography. I'm going to talk about what it is, when you want to use it, I'm going to go through some Lightroom editing tips on how to edit your photos when you do HDR, and overall let's just uh, discuss it a little bit further because there's a lot of misconceptions of what HDR is and I'm, uh, I'm here to clear up the mud a little bit, so let's dive in. Alright, so here on my screen you'll see a photo of Kirkjufell I mountain in Iceland in the waterfall and you're gonna notice that on this photo I have I've taken multiple photos of different exposures of the same exact scene that is called HDR high dynamic range so so dynamic range is essentially how much latency can I pull out of my camera in terms of the pixels how much can I, you know if the sky is too bright how much can I darken it before I completely lose it if, this, if the foreground is too dark, how much can I brighten that before I lose it? That is called dynamic range. If I were to take a phone, and then if I were to take a camera, the camera is going to have better dynamic range because it has a much larger sensor, bigger pixels, and essentially it's a lot more capable of a camera, essentially. That is roughly what dynamic range is. I'm sure some professionals will rip me apart in the comments, but at the end of the day, dynamic range is how much can you extract out of your camera. In this photo here, you'll see that instead of just taking one photo of the same shot, I've actually taken about four pictures of the same scene at different brightnesses, if you will. So like in this photo, I have Lightroom set to highlight the blown out exposure. So if we turn that off real quick, this is called highlight clipping. What that means is no matter what I do, it is impossible to bring back any detail. This is just pure white. There is no detail whatsoever here. So in, high, in Lightroom, we can overlay this button here, and this is essentially showing us, it even mentions it here, highlight clipping. On the opposite end, we have what's called shadow clipping, which is this section down here. That means no matter what I do, that is pure black, and I've lost all detail there. So. What the benefit of, a, of HDR is I'm able to, instead of taking one photo and trying to extract all of this detail out of one picture, I take multiple pictures for different um, exposures. So for example, this one that's on the screen at the moment, this photo is for the shadows. We don't really care about the sky in this particular photo. We care about these shadows. So yes, it is dark, but if I bring up the shadows here, now look, we have shadow detail. Uh, still a little bit, but that's not the end of the world. So if we go back a few down to this one here, I took this photo for the sky. This is my sky exposure, and yes, we still have highlight clipping. Um, I'm not going to be that particular. This sure looks, whoops, not that one. It's this one here. That little tiny bit of clipping is way better than that. <laughs> so, and in my opinion, I'm never going to drag my highlights down this slow anyways. I do not believe in dragging highlights all the way down. If you uh, need Lightroom editing tips as well, I made a video a few months ago about editing waterfalls. I'll link it below. But in this one, I have a lot more cloud detail here. I have color in the sky. And if you might notice, we have completely lost a lot of shadow detail here. And yes, I can drag my shadows up plus 100, but that is really not a good idea. This looks very gray. This is very noisy. It is not ideal for your camera. If you can get multiple exposures to handle the heavy duty work for you, you'll be a lot better off compared to taking one photo and trying to push it to the limit. So how do I shoot an HDR photo? So the easiest way to shoot an HDR photo, depending on what camera you have, some cameras have what is called bracketing. So bracketing is essentially taking up to seven or eight or nine shots at different levels So like on my Nikon here, let's look, can you see that? This says bracketing, auto exposure bracketing, and I can pick how many shots do I want to take and how big of a jump do I want there to be between it. So for example, this photo here, I ended up taking five and I'm only using four of them, but I have it set, let's see, will it focus? It says five shots with one stop in between. So that means it's gonna take five pictures no, let, let's see if it will focus here. That means my camera is going to take five pictures at different exposures. And then 
I will put them in Lightroom and edit them myself. Your camera might have a HDR mode built in. And just so you know, when you use HDR mode, it usually makes a JPEG photo. So JPEG versus RAW, RAW has a lot more latency for editing. So how do we edit an HDR bracket of pictures? I'm glad you asked. So what we do, so here in Lightroom, I have all of my images pulled up. And yeah, don't worry about all the ugly blues going on here. And let me reset this one real quick. So what we need to do is we need to highlight the photos we would like to bracket. I'm sorry, HDR. So in my situation here, I'm actually picking right down here on the bottom, this one through this one. I'm actually only using four. Sometimes I do three, sometimes I do five. It depends on how much you want to work with. What we're going to do is we're going to right click. We're going to go to photo merge HDR auto align, and I just leave this exactly what it is. I do not do the auto setting because if you do auto setting, it's actually going to go through and tweak it, and I would much rather do it myself. So I leave auto setting turned off, and I don't worry about deghosting. Um, deghosting is if you have any movement, uh, you know, like um, if people are walking or anything. I'm, I'm not too worried about that. So up here, Lightroom is merging them. I've already done this a few times as a sample, so this one's going to show up right here. Okay, so now we're going to see this says my name, which is how I name my files, and hdr.dng. So this is now a DNG file ready to edit. Now you might notice here that our sky and our foreground aren't so different anymore. Before the sky was completely blown out, this foreground was totally blue. Now we have a little bit more to work with, aka more dynamic range. But the best part is, is when we start playing with the dials, we are able to extract so much more information out of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start turning down my highlights a little bit. And honestly, I don't like to turn the highlights down much. I am not a fan of this. I want the sky to still be bright. The sky was bright. It's supposed to be bright. But now I have some of that cloud detail that we didn't have before. And I want to start bringing up some shadow detail, but not too much because I don't want the foreground to look like this. This doesn't look realistic to me. I want something like that. I'm going to add some contrast to this. Um, I'm going to brighten it up just a little bit. And actually I'm going to take a linear gradient. I'm going to actually drag it over the sky because I only want to edit the sky. Uh, I'm not a fan of all the AI features. I would, I'm just, I would kind of like to do this stuff more by myself here. I like to add some contrast. This photo actually looks pretty warm. I'm, I may not mess with the color balance too much here. I'm a big fan of, of lowering the clarity just to add like a dreamy effect to it. But let's add some dehaze here. Saturation, you gotta be careful. <laughs> I don't like to go too over, or vi vibrance, I don't like to go too over the top. I'm sure you've seen um, a photo that looks like this on a television at like a Best Buy or a computer store. Um, probably of this exact place. I know vividly, I have seen Kirkyfell on a television at a micro center when I was shopping for a laptop. This exact photo, plus 100 saturation, it was, it made my eyes burn out. So we're gonna chill that out a little bit. Um, and then I always like to go down here, remove chromatic aberration. There's not too much happening here. Uh, and honestly, this looks pretty good to me. I am not a fan of, I actually like to make my photos kind of pink, more on the pink side. I don't know why. I think it's just because like with sunsets, I associate more pink with that. So I'm actually gonna drag this up, uh, nothing crazy. Uh, actually, let's see what it was default, plus two default. So I might go like plus five. Uh, let's, you know, I, and in my opinion, I don't want the shadows to be too high because shadows are supposed to be darker than the highlights. So I don't want the foreground to be as bright as the sky. That doesn't make sense in this photo, it's a sunset. So I'm actually going to bring up the foreground just a little bit. Um, and I'm okay if it's a little dark. It's a cave. It's supposed to be dark. Sorry if I'm sweating a little bit. I got the air conditioning turned off so you guys can hear me. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to turn it right back on when I'm done. But uh, it's a little hot right now. It's um, the end of July upstairs. It's about 80 degrees outside. So I'm recording at night. So luckily it's a little colder now. Yeah, honestly, I'm very happy with this. Um, funny enough, this photo was actually taken at midnight 
uh, we were in Iceland right during the midnight sun. We went to Kirkjufell. We got to witness the midnight sun happen. It was absolutely spectacular. Um, my camera information wasn't up to date. It's going to say it was taken at 7, but that's because I'm in Connecticut. So add five hours, it was, or actually Iceland, I think Iceland's four or five hours. So it was around midnight, which was absolutely incredible. I'm going to put on the screen a before and after. So we're going to hit the letter Y. So here's a before and after of an HDR photo. You might notice I'm able to get so much more out of it because essentially this HDR is not just one photo, it's four pictures combined into one to give me the most dynamic range out of my camera sensor. If you are doing landscapes involving sunsets or any sort of very harsh lighting, aka a bright sky with a dark foreground, HDR is going to be your absolute best friend and I highly recommend trying it out. All right, so I'm gonna wrap it up there. This was really made to just be a short and sweet video about how to edit an HDR photo. I hope you guys go out and shoot some more. I'm planning on going out and shooting and doing a little bit of vlogging once the weather cools off a little bit. You know, as Waterfall Joe, not a lot of waterfalls flow when it's 90 degrees outside. Um, I'm hoping to make more content about my Iceland stuff. When we were there, I wasn't really recording videos. I was really there to take pictures. Uh, you can find more of my stuff on my website, waterfalljoe.com. My Instagram's Waterfall Joe, and of course the YouTube channel. I'll be posting con uh, a little bit more coming up in the future. Um, hopefully, as autumn approaches, I'll be out more with my camera. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the video and uh, send it to any of your friends who are fellow photographers if you know you want to just learn more about HDR. So, thank you so much. Take care.